So today we're going to look at a heat pump where the compressor won't cut on. Uh, the most common reason for this is going to be that uh, the capacitor's gone bad. And so we're going to open it up uh, and we're going to replace the capacitor to fix this issue. So before you do anything, you're going to want to disconnect the electricity. So you'll find a manual disconnect. So there'll be a box somewhere on the wall and you'll open it up and you'll pull uh, this disconnect out so it'll be in the on position so it'll be connected you'll pull it out and then you can put it back in in the off position or if you're really paranoid you can just put it on top and then you know that it's disconnected all right so we're gonna go ahead and open up the side uh, this unit happens to be a train um, uh, but there will always be a section where the electrical wires are going into and that's what you're going to open up so in this instance, this happens to be uh, eight millimeter. So go ahead and take the bolts out. And on this one, you happen to just slide the Slide this panel down and it comes off. I go ahead and hit stop. So once you open up the heat pump, you're gonna have potentially a, a couple of uh, capacitors. And so uh, this one up at the top is a run capacitor. And if we look at the label on it, we're gonna see there's a there's two numbers on there there's a 40 uf and a 5 uf and then we see that it's 440 volts and so um there's actually uh, two capacitors within this one that's um, 40 microfarads and one that's five and so one's for the compressor and then one's for the fan and then um, down here we have a motor start capacitor and this happens to be 330 volts and it's 135 to 162 microfarads. Before you start working on anything, it's a good idea to go ahead and just take a picture of where every wire is connected. And that way you'll know exactly where to put things back when uh, you're done. So on each of the capacitors, you have to be very careful because they could have a lot of stored voltage in them. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a rubber glove on. You're going to have a screwdriver with a plastic handle. And you're going to want to go ahead and discharge like so on uh, one with two terminals, just discharge like this, just to make sure. So you'll just short that out to discharge the circuit within there because it can be dangerous. So you're gonna wanna do that on the old one that's in there and then also on the, the new one that you're going to replace just because it could have been returned and it could have a charge on it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect them. Okay, so we've uh, made sure that it's disconnected. We've discharged these and so we can go ahead and disconnect the wires. Uh, you can see that these have been in here for a while. All right, so um, after we determine what type of capacitor we needed, so this one happens to be a 45, 440 volts, we ordered the new one. Uh, of course, 
you know, this one being potentially 12 years old. Um, they're, you know, different uh, diameter. Um, so one of the key things you have to do is determine which terminal is which. On the old one, it's all rusted and you can't see anything. But interestingly, um, uh, the way that it's, it's made, the common uh, actually has four terminals on it. The fan has two, and uh, the Herm for Hermetic Compressor has three. So we're able to figure out which one's which. And so uh, basically, um, I'm gonna install it like, like this in order to put it back in so on uh, the, the way that it was. Um, the motor start capacitor, it's uh, a different diameter as well. Uh, these are both 135 to 162 microfarads. And um, you'll see that uh, uh, the old one actually has a resistor on top that's used to, to discharge uh, the capacitor. All right, so after you have um, connected the red and orange wire, or you could do this ahead of time, what you'll need to do is install uh, uh, resistor on here. So this is a new 2 watt 15,000 ohm uh, resistor and what this will do is bleed off any excess voltage uh, that's stored in the uh, capacitor after it starts the motor. Um, so this one happens to have some nice um, quick connect terminals on it so it makes it real easy uh, to install. So uh, that is pretty much pretty much it. And basically, what this resistor will do is just after it starts the motor, uh, uh, there will be a little bit of residual voltage, and that resistor will just bleed it off um, each time it starts the motor. So, in addition uh, to to putting uh, the new resistor on there. If you're in a pinch and you don't have a new one, you could always take the one off of the old capacitor and put it on uh, to the start capacitor uh, like so and then solder it in place. So what I've done is on these brackets, I've just kind of um, kind of bent them one way so that they'll still, uh, so they'll be able to clamp on uh, to these smaller capacitors. and hold them in place. So let me go ahead and put these brackets on. On some uh, heat pumps, the capacitors are, are gonna just kind of slide down in uh, to something that's holding them. So it's just gonna be uh, a little bit different depending upon uh, how your system is um, put together. Let me go ahead and tighten this up. So on this top capacitor, I've bent the bracket as well so it'll hold this skinnier capacitor in place. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the bracket up. All right, so it's in place. So I've gone back and referred to the picture that I took. Um, so I know that um, I've put it in right, so uh, this is going to be um, our common. Back there is going to be the Herm, and up here is going to be the fan. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll do the common first. And so the common uh, gets this red. And the purple. It's gonna to be totally different on, on your unit, of course. So you just wanna put the wires back the way that they were. All right, and this, uh, this rear one is gonna be um, our Herm, and so it's gonna get these two orange cables. All right, 
So go ahead and put one there. And go ahead and put this one here. It's a little bit different than the uh, previous uh, capacitor just because of space. And then we'll go ahead and put our fan here on the uh, fan terminal. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's uh, not super difficult uh, to replace uh, these capacitors. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and um, put the manual disconnect back in place in the on position to reconnect the electricity like so. All right, so now that we've changed out the capacitors, we're gonna go ahead and use our app to uh, go ahead and cut it on. So you can hear the compressor start up. side on So the side's closed up. Uh, we can tell it's working because we can hear the compressor running. We can also feel how cold the line is. And then we checked inside and we can see how cold the air is blowing out of uh, uh, the, uh, the registers within the house. So uh, it's a quick fix. Uh, each of those was uh, about $10 a piece. Uh, and we got it all, all back in working order. <laughs> 